Is there a quick and easy way to determine if a Blue Note record is from the original Blue Note era? The answer is yes, and in this video I'm going to show you how to do that and hopefully prevent you from making some costly mistakes. Hi Vinyl Community, it's Jason from the Jazz Basement coming to you with a, a fresh video. I had a discussion last night with a close friend who's just beginning his journey in, into collecting jazz records and we had a long discussion around blue notes and some of the process that I go through when I'm in a store or looking on discogs to uh, understand the, a particular blue note pressing. Now, when I were talking about the original blue note era, we're talking of the period between 1939 when blue note was formed by Alfred Lyon up until about mid-1966 when Blue Note was sold to Liberty Records. This is the most valuable and coveted period for record collectors, and there's some telltale signs that you need to look for to determine if the record you're looking to buy, or maybe you already own, um, is in fact an original Blue Note pressing. Uh, and what better way to highlight that um, than through a, a example. So. This is the most recent um, pickup for Blue Note. For me, it's six pieces of silver. It's the Horace Silver Quintet Blue Note 1539. Got it last week. Um, this is an early press. I think it's from 1956 or 1957. Okay, so what does the record look like? Well, it looks like your normal 12-inch record uh, on black wax with the label. So here we are. Um, and there's a lot of really good information that you can find on the label. Um, in this case, it says micro groove at the top. That means it's mono. Obviously, horse silver quintet. We've got Blue Note Records, 767 Lexington Avenue. That was, this was the, the first address that they used. It's got the Blue Note iconic label there. There's no registered trademark at the bottom, so we know that this is an early label. That in it of itself is not enough information to determine if this is uh, pressing from the original Blue Note era. Now, this is, and I'll tell you why. You need to look in the runout groove, okay? And here's where you're going to find all your juicy bits of information. Uh, first, you're going to find the catalog number, in this case, BN-LP-1539-A-1. You're also going to find, um, more importantly, who mastered this? Um, in this case, you can see right here, RVG initials, so Rudy Van Gelder. Um, that in and of itself is, is very helpful, but the most important distinguishing characteristic mark that you're gonna look for is the stylized P, the inverted P, sometimes it's called the ear. And in this case, it's right here, okay? Now, what does that look like up close? It looks like this, okay? Stylized P, inverted P, the ear, whatever you call it. This is the mark of Plastilite. The Plastilite was the pressing plant that Blue Note used for all of its original, um, all of its original pressings up until mid-1966 when they were sold to Liberty Records. So, why is that important? When Liberty Records bought Blue Note, they bought the entire inventory of covers and labels. More importantly, they moved all the production from Plastilite to their own in-house pressing plant called Alldisc. Alldisc was a great pressing plant. Um, there's nothing wrong with a, a record that was pressed at Alldisc, but there are price consequences to that. The plastic for, for collectors, the plastilite pressed blue notes are worth a lot more. So when you're out there looking, it's really important to make a determination. Does this particular record have the plastilite P or does it not? Okay. And normally when you're looking at a record, the label is really important. The problem is Liberty reused a lot of the old labels. So you might be flipping through, come up on a record, you look at it, it's got the 767 Lexington Avenue label, or maybe the 47 West 63rd label. 
Um, and you think, wow, this is from the late 50s, early 60s. And then you look in the dead wax and you see RVG or a Van Gelder stamp. Everything checks out. The one thing that's missing, the Plastilite P. That means it's a Liberty Press. Now, from a dollars and cents perspective, um, that has real consequences, okay? You might be able to find an original press of a, of, of, of a particular record that might go for three, $400 if it's pressed at Plastilite. That Liberty version, even though they might look the same, you might be able to get that Liberty version for 40 or 50 bucks. Why that's important, not only when you're out there looking at records in the wild, but it, particularly if you're going to order online, okay? If you're going to order through Discogs or you're going to look at an auction on eBay because sellers are not required to tell you what's not there, right? They'll put it front and center. Look at this original blue note. It's got the New York, NY, uh, it's got the New York USA labels on it. Check this out. Van Gelder stamp, and that's all great, but most reputable sellers know that collectors and people in the know, um, and this isn't this isn't a, a big secret, want to know is there the Plasilite P, the inverted P, the ear, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so if they know, if the sellers know that, they're going to put that in the description, absolutely, because they know that they're going to be able to charge more or that record's gonna command a, a, a higher amount. But not everyone knows that. So hopefully now you're armed with that information and you can go out and use that to your advantage, okay? Mostly through identifying pressings that are purported to be or, you know, from the original Blue Note era, but now you know maybe are not because they're missing that Plastilite P. In some cases, and this has happened to me, people don't know. Um, they don't know the P. I've gone to record shops that specialize in punk or metal and they have this little tiny jazz section and they just look at it and say, well, there's mismatched labels or um, you know, that's, that's a Liberty Press. And I've looked in the dead wax and sure enough, there's the Plastilite P. So, you know, I bought a $20 record that, um, you know, should have been $150, $160. So it can work to your advantage. Um, it's mostly going to work to your advantage in terms of saving you money. Lastly, um, this is a really great resource um, that I can recommend. It's a, it's a guide to identifying original pressings by Frederick Cohen. Um, Fred Cohen is the proprietor of the Jazz Record Center in New York City. This is the preeminent um, jazz record shop really in the world. Um, this is this guide's a little bit more geared towards identifying individual records in terms of the very first press, what you need to look for, but there's a lot of really good background information. So if you're going to get serious into Blue Note, if you don't have this, pick it up. I'll drop a link in the description. Um, I have no affiliation um, with with the Jazz Record Center. I just think it's a, it's a great resource for you. Um, hopefully you found this video useful, helpful, learn something. Um, let me know in the comments uh, if that's the case. And uh, until next time, have a good one.